Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Modern Combat and Survival Magazine. One of the most critical areas of your survival plan is how you're going to feed yourself and those that you protect during a crisis. Now, if you're in a shelter in place type of a scenario where you're staying at home and you're going to be able to stay there during the crisis, things are pretty easy because you can stockpile away a bunch of food. But if you're ever forced to evacuate your home for whatever reason, whether it's due to a chemical spill, a hurricane, a tornado, a wildfire, whatever the reason, and you have to retreat to a secondary safe location, things get a little bit trickier because then you're going to have to possibly carry your food. If the highways are jammed up and the only means that you have is to trek by foot to another location, you might have to carry it all in what we call a survival kit or a bug out bag. So I asked a bunch of my survival friends when I was talking with them the other day about what would be their best choice for survival food in that type of a scenario. And surprisingly, every single one of them fell into the same trap and myths and misinformation that's littering the internet right now. So what I want to do is I want to ask you the same question that I asked them that they seem to get wrong and see what your opinion is. In other words, if you were forced to evacuate your home for a three day period and travel by foot to a secondary survival retreat, which of the following three foods would you choose to pack away in your survival kit, in your bug out bag? Would you choose the canned baked beans? Or would you choose the military style MRE, which is the meals ready to eat designed for the military? Or would you go with every college student's best friend, the top ramen noodles? So which of these do you think would be the best to pack away for a survival trek of about three days? Go ahead and make your choice now. And what I'll do is I'll share with you the best answer, but I'll also give you three critical tips that you must know in order to customize your survival food plan. Go ahead and which one of these would you choose right now? Okay. Now, you've got your choice. So let's go ahead and compare these three types of foods with the criteria that we're talking about. So the first one that's very, very important for you is convenience. If you're forced to evacuate your home, it's gonna be for a reason. It's gonna be because there's a wildfire headed your way or a hurricane has come through or is coming through or there was a chemical spill. Basically, you have to leave your location because it's no longer safe there anymore. So your goal at that point when you're bugging out is to get from point A to point B as quickly and as safely as you possibly can. So when it comes to convenience, you want foods that you can basically have on the run. Now, as you're going along, because it's a, a quick extraction, you're not gonna be setting up an elaborate campsite. You're not gonna have your stove there and all the, the propane tanks and things like that. So you need food that you can actually, maybe even eat on the run. So it needs to be very convenient. When you look at the food that we're comparing here, baked beans, it's pretty simple. Take out your P38 military can opener, open it up, stick in a fork, and you're pretty much all set. You can even eat it on the run, no big deal. So, pretty good, uh, pretty good choice for when it comes to convenience. Now, when it comes to the MREs, well, they were designed for the military and they were designed to be convenient. They were designed for soldiers who may be road marching to the next battlefield or whatever it is. So, MREs are designed to be convenient. You basically just open them up, you have individual packs inside, and you could just eat the one pack, pull out the next pack, eat it again later on, eat out the cheese and crackers, whatever it is. But they're designed for convenience. So pretty good choice when it comes to convenience for the MREs. For the ramen noodles, again, very convenient and efficient because, I mean, they're basically just crunchy noodles. You can eat them like potato chips if you needed to. Or if you get a few minutes during a break to uh, just to like you go to change your socks or whatever, just throw them in a canteen cup with some water, hit some sterno or some sort of heat tab with it real quick, cooks in three minutes, and you have yourself a really hearty bowl of ramen noodle soup. So uh, on the convenience factor, all three of them are really good choices. The second most critical factor that you need to consider with your bug out food is the nutrition profile. So when it comes to nutrition and you're, you're trekking in a, uh, in a 72 hour extraction basically, then there are two major things that you need to know about. And those are calories and carbohydrates. So calories are basically your body's fuel source. You think of it like, a, uh, like gas in your, in your car. So your car has a gas tank. When you run out of gas, what happens to the car? It pulls over, it stalls, and it's not going anywhere. Calories are your body's fuel source. 
And if you run out of calories, you're not getting enough calories during the day, then you get weak, you get tired, and eventually you just kind of roll over and it's really hard to go for this. So you're not going to go as fast, you're not going to go as dependable, and you can potentially even die if you're not getting enough food over a period of time. So calories are very important. Now when you're trekking, when you're, re when you're on your way to your survival retreat, what you want to do is you want to focus on about 2,500 calories a day. So you're going to be walking that whole time. Arguably, you might need more. Some people might need less. But a good baseline for you to, to uh, plan on is about 2,500 calories a day. And that should give you enough energy to be able to make it through the day and get to the next one. So uh, 2,500 calories. Now, the other part of that equation are carbohydrates. And carbohydrates of all the nutrients, of the fats and the proteins, Carbohydrates are that primary nutrient that fills up that gas tank. So carbohydrates um, have gotten a lot of press and a lot of news lately about how they, they're, they're so high in calories that people gain weight from them. Well, that's a good thing when you're hiking or you're basically exercising all day by hiking. So you want something that's high in calories and high in carbohydrates that are going to supply those calories. That your body, carbohydrates are an immediate uh, fuel source for your body. So that's what you're looking for in the food. So let's go back to our comparison with the, with the, uh, the baked beans. They have some sugar in them, so it provides some, uh, some initial carbohydrates that are burned very, very quickly. And the beans provide a long-standing energy source. They're high carbohydrates, but they're, they're also fibrous, so they provide a steady energy source for you. Very high in calories, very high in carbohydrates as well, and they even have some protein in there as well. So good choice for nutrition. MREs are designed to give the battlefield soldier the nutrients that he needs. They know that the military is going to be out there. It's going to be hard charging all day. It's going to be very strenuous. They need very dense calories, and they're going to need a lot of them. So MREs are designed to give you a lot of calories and a lot of, um, and a lot of carbohydrates. In fact, this MRE has about 1,250 calories for one MRE, so that's about half of what your daily intake is. The can of beans has a little bit less than about 500 calories to it. Um, so another good choice for nutrition. The ramen noodles are basically a pasta, and what do marathon runners eat before a major marathon? You know, they're loading up on high calories the, the day before with a lot of pasta, a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of calories, a lot of carbohydrates. That's basically what ramen noodles are. They're, it's pasta. Uh, it also has a little seasoning packet in there that you add to the soup, and it has a lot of sodium in it. So when you're sweating, like I am now if you're in a, if you're in a southern location, um, especially if you're walking all day long, you're going to be sweating a lot. You're going to be losing a lot of body. So the salt in the ramen is actually a really, really good um, electrolyte um, uh, replacer as well. So there's about 400 calories in one of ramen noodles, about just a little bit less than what uh, one can of beans. So all three of them are actually high in calories, high in carbohydrates. So they're running pretty even right now, but it's the third critical factor that most people get tripped up on. This is the one where you start to really see some difference between the three of them, and that is the size and the weight. Now, let's go ahead and compare these when it comes to size and weight, because whatever you have here is going to have to go inside of your, your survival bag. So when we look at the, uh, the baked beans, in order to get your over three days, 2,500 calories a day, it's going to be 7,500 calories total that you're planning on for your survival. The baked beans being about 500 calories each, you're going to need quite a few cans over those three days. In fact, you're going to need... I'll do the math for you so you don't have to worry about it. But you're going to need 15 cans of baked beans for those three days to get your, your equivalent of what you're going to need for calories and, and, and your carbohydrates. So as you can see, this right here has got to go inside of there. Okay, weight-wise, these 15 cans, as you can see, they're, they're also very hard to kind of keep going here. Um, and these are going to be jiggling around inside of your pack too. But they're actually quite heavy. So these are actually going to weigh about, if you, if you look at each one of them, they're going to be about 15 pounds. They're about one pound per can. Okay. So as you can see, kind of clunky. Uh, those ridges can dig into your back. I know from experience, from having trekked with them. Uh, but they're also very heavy. So 15 pounds. A good choice? Well, that's pretty heavy to throw inside of a pack. 
So let's go to what the military is on doing. This is what we used to have in our, in our uh, rucksacks when I was in the Army. And each one of these now is 1,250 calories each. So you're gonna roughly going to have to eat two of these each day. So over three days, essentially comes out to six MREs that you're going to have to eat to keep up your calorie intake. Now, each of these, again, are going to have to fit inside of here. You can bring it down a little bit by pulling all the, the stuff out of there, but it still adds up to about this size. You can see they collapse down pretty well. So this is a pretty good picture of what's going to have to go inside of your bug out bag. Now, this is what most people choose for the survival food that they're going to be packing away. As far as weight, six of these is going to equal about half of this. So it's about seven and a half pounds for all of the MREs to go in your pack. So again, half of this, but it still can be kind of heavy. So, but let's take a look at the ramen noodles now. The ramen noodles themselves, as far as size, you can see pretty small. As far as how many you need to get your 7,500 calories, well, you're going to need quite a few because there's less calories in these than there are the beans. You're going to need about 19 bags of ramen noodles. So this is 19 bags of ramen noodles right here. All right. Now, as you can see, it's about the same size as the MREs, except that ramen noodles actually have a secret power to them. Because they are crunchy and they're mostly filled with air, you can crunch these on down pretty far. When you do that, you can put it inside of a little bag, and now you can see we went from this size to just this size. Now, if you take all 19 of these and you add up the, uh, the weight of them, it's only a little over three pounds. It's about three and a half pounds, so it's less than half of what all the MREs are, and it's a quarter of what it would take for all of the beans. Now, you can even take this down even further by taking all of these, crunching them up, and putting them inside of a big bag. Now you can mix all the flavors, you can crunch all up the same flavor, it doesn't really matter. But you can basically, this is 19 bags of ramen noodles right here. Now when you compare that to an MRE, it's not far off from the size of just one MRE. Yet this is three days worth of food, and this is half a day's worth of food. Eight of all of these together. So as you can see, the clear winner in all of this is really good old ramen noodles. And they're pretty inexpensive also. While this was over $100 for all these MREs, all of these ramen noodles were only, uh, they were less than $5. So you can see in all areas, the ramen noodle pretty much comes out the winner when it comes to survival food. And you know what people forget is that what you pack you have to also carry. And this happens with all of your survival gear. And it serves as one of the foundations for our Extreme Bug Out Bag program. Because people forget that the gear that you use, the food that you put away, the water, everything, it might seem really light when you put it on in your, in your living room, but as soon as you start walking, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. Three days of carrying something, you're gonna find out what's critical and what's not critical. And again, this applies to all of your gear, not just food. Food is just a part of it. Now, you can find list after list online of bug out bag equipment, survival kit equipment. And unfortunately, most of what you're gonna find in the forums and everywhere else is gonna be a lot, of, a lot of myths, misinformation, and outright lies about what it takes to really pack away inside of your survival kit. So you have to be very careful about those lists. They're really not, uh, mostly not essential gear, or they weigh too much, or they're just not practical in a real survival scenario. The real secret to, to an evacuation is packing ultra light, but still using the same critical gear that you need for all sorts of um, scenarios that you might pop up against. So weather is one thing, food and water requirements, uh, injuries that you might have along the way, even defending against other people that are caught up in the same crisis you are, whether it's looters, whether it's beggars, or whether it's riots that are happening as a part of the social chaos. Food is only part of the equation. There are other gear considerations that we talk about in the Extreme Bug Out Bag program that also help you determine what's the most critical, but it will also help get you from point A to point B safely with you and your family. So the first step here is, do you even have a bug out bag? If you don't have a bug out bag, what are you waiting for?
disasters do not give a warning all the time. You never know when an, an accident is going to happen with a chemical spill. You never know when a wildfire is going to start. You never know when disaster is going to strike, and it could happen tomorrow. So if you're not prepared with your own bag now, then you're already putting you and your family at a disadvantage and potentially threatening your lives just by not being able to quickly get up and go at a moment's notice. So the first step is get a bug out bag, start putting the, the equipment together right now. If you have a bug out bag, if you have a survival kit, start evaluating it on this same level of analysis. Is it really critical? Um, what is the size and weight that you're carrying? And then actually carry it and see what, it's re what it really feels like to carry it for a, good, uh, for a good amount of time. Remember, disasters have no warning. Now is the time to start, so don't procrastinate. Once you start this process and once you really get it down with your survival kit being your, your core foundation, then you're going to feel the confidence that comes with being prepared for any disaster, crisis, or attack that you and your family could have to be forced to survive against.